The question here is pretty straightforward. To answer it, we are going to need to know a little more about this particular group of numbers. When we evaluate the statements, as we always do in data sufficiency, we will evaluate them separately first. Although we can get a sense of the question stem and the information before we do that. For example, we can notice that one statement is about integers and one statement is about non-integers. On the GMAT, we cannot assume that an unspecified number is an integer, a positive or negative whole number, unless we are specifically told so. It could be a non-integer, but we can assume that numbers are real numbers. If you don't know what a real number is, you can forget about it or look it up, but you don't need to know it for the GMAT. All of the numbers are real. So all of the numbers greater than 70 are integers or non-integers. The problem is that each statement tells me about one segment of the group and not the other. Looking at the statements separately, for example, statement one tells me that 5% of integers are greater than 70. But for all I know, 100% or 0% of the non-integers could be above 70. So I have no way of knowing the overall percentage. Therefore, statement one by itself is insufficient to give a definitive answer to the question. Statement two has the same problem, logically speaking. So it's insufficient. So I conclude that each of the statements is insufficient individually and we'll have to combine them. When we do that, there is still a problem here. I don't know how many integers or non-integers there are. There could be 10 integers and 100 non-integers, or 10 integers and 1,000 non-integers, for example. Each of these cases, which is valid, would yield different answers to the question. Therefore, we don't have sufficient information to answer the question definitively, even when the statements are combined. Therefore, we still have insufficiency, and the correct answer is E.